Hello everyone, welcome back. This is chapter 9, part 7. In this part, we'll talk about short run and long run costs. So, long run marginal cost curve intersects long run average cost curve when the long run average cost curve is, a, is at its minimum point. So, I'm just going to quickly draw this. I love to just draw graphs. It's easier to understand long run average cost. Boom, long run marginal cost. Okay. So, at each point of output where a particular average total cost is tangent to long run average cost curve, then you have short run marginal cost curve equals to the long run marginal cost curve. Okay, so for all average total cost curve, so this is the relationship between short run and long run curves, for all AT seekers, average total cost curves, this is short run, right? The point of tangency with long run average cost curve is at an output less than the output of minimum of the average total cost curve if the tangency is at an output less than associated with the uh, minimum of LAC. What does this even mean? <laughs> okay, I'm going to go over the graph. This is really easy if you look at it visually. Okay. Long run average cost curve. This is the long run average cost curve you shaped. And you also have infinite number of average total cost curve at each output level. These are short run average total cost curves that is that are tangent to this main long run average cost curve. I'm going to erase everything. Okay, so basically what it says is that this is the minimum point of the long run average total cost curve. Perfect. If average to total cost curve, this is the short run average total cost curve, just one of them, is going to be tangent to the long run average cost curve at an output level that is less than its minimum point if it is to the left of the lowest point of long run average cost curve. Basically, economies of scale. All the average total cost curves here will be tangent to the long run average cost curve, like this, tangent. That quantity will be less than the lowest point of that short run average total cost curve. Okay, and vice versa. The average total short run average total cost curve will be tangent, right, to the long run average cost curve. And the tangency point will point out an output level that is smaller than the point you have here. Okay, so uh, that was a mistake. <laughs> that was a mistake. If you look at this area, if you look at the, this economies of scale region, long run average cost curve, right? And average total cost curve tangency point, this is the output level. So the lowest point of that average short run average total cost curve is here. So this tangency point will point out a greater level of quantity or scale or output level then the minimum of the average total cost curve if average total cost curve is tangent to long run average cost curve to the right of the minimum point of the long run average cost curve. So it, it, it looks a little complicated. It is not visually. You have infinite number of average total cost curves. So this long run average total cost curve actually comes from these infinite number of average total cost curves that intersect and you just look at their lowest point. So it is a locus of all points. So like here, we grab this point, boom. If we only draw three, right? If you draw hundreds of average total cost curves in this region, what you're gonna get is your long run, continuous long run average cost curve. This is another example. I really like this example, short run and long run cost. So if a small bookstore expects to sell only 1000 books a month, right, then it will be able to sell the quantity of 
uh, books at the lowest average cost of $22 per cost book if it builds a small store so this is like a kiosk small kiosk at the mall right a average total cost curve on the left figure is the small one a larger bookstore will be able to sell twenty thousand dollar books per month so this is like barnes and noble store in your city it's a book store their average total cost is eighteen dollars cheaper because of you have economies of scale bookstore selling twenty thousand books per month and a bookstore selling forty thousand books per month right this is barnes and mobile noble Constant returns to scale have the same average cost. So you grow your bookstore, you put a coffee shop, make it nicer. There's a playground for children activities, right? The cost is going to stay the same. A bookstore selling 20,000 books per month will have reached the minimum efficient scale. Very large bookstores will experience these economies of scale. So anything beyond 40,000 books, ooh. You have really big bookstore, five stories, the cost is going to go up. So you actually find a long run average cost curve, LAC, by combining these locus points and the continuous um, continuum of different scales of bookstores. Okay. So first we experience the economies of scale is quantity increases, long run average cost decreases. Here economies of scale. Let me clean this up. Okay, economies of scale happens in this region. Quantity increases, average cost goes down. Minimum efficient scale, 20,000. Level of output at which economies of scale are exhausted. Constant returns to scale, the situation when a firm's long run average cost curve remain unchanged. Right here. And then we have this economies of scale, constant returns to scale. This economies of scale coming in, quantity increases, long run average cost curve starts going up here. Long run average cost curve went down, nice. Quantity increased, long run average cost curve stayed the same. I put a bar, this is an L, okay? All right, so boom, uh, this economies of scale situation, when a firm's long run average cost rise as the firm increases the scale or output. Okay, so here's a quick question. Which bookstore is more likely to experience this economies of scale? Is it bookstore producing 1,000, 20, 40, or 80,000? Which one is it? Okay, take your time. The answer is 80,000. <laughs> All right, so restructuring short run costs because managers have greatest flexibility to choose inputs in the long run. Costs are lower in the long run than in the short run for all output levels except that for which the fixed output is at its optimal level. Short run costs can be reduced by adjusting fixed inputs uh, to their optimal long run levels when opportunity arises. So in the short run, capital is fixed, but in the long run, capital is variable, so you can adjust it to its best level. The short run expansion path Therefore, is a horizontal line showing the cost minimizing input combinations for various output levels when capital is fixed in the short run. So this is the long run expansion path, right? So this is capital, labor. I have my isoquant producing 10,000 units, 12,000 units. It goes up, right? I have my iso cost curves. One, two, three. Okay. So I find the optimal point E, F. So this is a long run expansion path. What happens in the short run? Well, in the short run, I got news. In the short run, my capital is fixed. So short run expansion path needs to be here. Okay, this is your short run expansion path. You can increase your production by hiring more people. Your capital is fixed. Let's say in the short run you have 70 units of capital, then this is your short run expansion path. And this is it folks, you can read the summaries and I'll see you later, we're done.